Hey guys, I'm doing one more video for today, and I'm in the five minute pool with a Queen's Gambit Accepted on our plate. This is a pretty rare line of the Queen's Gambit Accepted. You don't see the c5 on move three very often. Do I take with the Queen or with the Knight? I think with the Queen. So let's do that. e4. Looks reasonable. Hmm, 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 hmm. I feel like I've seen this variation before, but I don't remember anything about it. I really don't. Okay, let's take and then take on c4. Okay, let's threaten his knight. It should be six, makes sense. Now maybe we'll pull this back, bishop e2, castles queenside. I can grab the bishop pair with knight g5, seems reasonable. Is this Finland? Finland. And I'll bring this bishop back to e3 to hit c5 and also prevent rook d4. Okay, f3. Thing is, now I, I have to work hard to keep my bishop pair. I think a decent plan for him would be to get this knight to e6 and try to get it into d4. I played f3 because I want f2 for my king. I think that would be a good square. This reminds me of an exchange, Roy Lopez. Let's play a3, just to keep his knight out of b4. An exchange, Roy Lopez, in that white has like a four versus three majority on the king side. Although in an exchange, Roy Lopez, his pawns would be messed up on the queen side. Okay, so he might be sending that knight in. So let's do this. So he's probably sending it into d4. Regardless, I'm going to stake out some territory. So I'm going to go g4. Because the long-term goal is to try to make a pass pawn on the king side. That's what we're looking to do. So now he might use the c4 square in some capacity. Huh. Let's do g5. See if he'll break up his structure. Also, I kind of want to go f4, and I don't want my g-pawn to hang. Bishop b3. Okay, that's that's fine by me. I don't mind giving up the file if this happens, because now I'm going to get my rook over to g1. This looks tasty. Okay, I like my position a lot now. I think he should have treated that structure in a different way possibly have captured on g5. This still won't be simple to win, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Probably should play rook d7. Rook g8, no, okay. Hmm. Oh, you know, let's get our king up. Try to march it. I don't know if I'm going to go all the way in through h4, h5, h6, or f4. f4, he can play bishop e6 and stop me. I feel like I should also go, okay, that one I'll go bishop back here and stay solid. 
I'm not going into an opposite color bishop endgame unless I could like maybe win this f6 pawn. Which maybe is not so unrealistic. Hmm. Let's go this way. Yeah, bishop f7. Huh, huh, huh. Just pausing to think because I want to make an inroad and it's not apparent how I do that at the moment. Okay, I'm just going to go here. He's probably going to move his king over though. Oh, he hung his knight. Okay, <laughs> that was a big blunder by him. Um, I was worried that he would go king d6 or d7 in this position. Yeah, and if I keep pushing my king, I'm not getting anywhere. Looks nice, but I think he's holding. This knight on c4 gives me some headaches. I thought this would be easier to make use of my 3 versus 2 on this side of the board, but it's not. I, I was criticizing his decision right around here after g5 to just let me capture and then occupy the g-file. I was expecting him to either push or maybe take. I guess if he pushes, I can play f4 and then maybe establish this pawn on e5 or take on f5. So he did this, take, take, here, rook g8, rook g8 was interesting. I was expecting him to defend more passively with rook d7, probably rook g8 is best. Maybe I shouldn't capture, I mean maybe I should play rook g3 and try to get him to repair my structure, but that seemed wrong because I, I think I want my king active, I don't think this is that much of an improvement, so I wanted my king active. Maybe I should play f4 directly, so that, let's say after the trade, knight c4, I can go bishop c1 and his bishop is cut out of the game. There's some complications though. Yeah, maybe that was a little bit better. It seems like as played I didn't get as much as I thought. And the opposite color bishop endgame, as I said, I think I would only do that if I knew I had a good chance of winning this pawn. Which, come to think of it, maybe I can. Ah, okay, so I can just play bishop d2 or c3, or maybe go here or here. Maybe I can win that pawn. And then I have the two connected passers in the center. He could pitch the pawn soon by playing f5. Uh, but... I mean, if the only one who can win this position is white, this might be a draw though, because this king is pretty close. Hmm. So taking on c4 might have been a better chance for the victory. Because I did this. I mean, I had I had half a mind to trade now and bring the king in and try to win that, but he always has bishop e2 and counterattack my pawns on light squares. That stalls my play. We'd be headed for a draw in that case again. So, yep, if he had just played, you know, let's say king d6 here, I don't think he has too much to worry about. I also can't do too much with these pawns because b3, it forces the knight to move, but after the knight moves, the pawn on b3 would be undefended. So I can't do much with my queen side. I think I have to stick with my bishop on c1 for a while and... Either that or take his knight so I can free my bishop. 
<clears throat> Earlier in the game, let's just take a, a peek. So this was opening. Let's see if the engine likes knight g5 going after the two bishops. If I have an advantage, it's very small at this point. Oh, okay, so <laughs> the engine says just let white take on e6, I presume, because he's going to get that square for his knight and then maybe get into d4 faster than he did in the game. Okay, so knight g5 was totally overrated. I should have just castled. Now I can see that I have something, a little bit of something. f3. This type of middle game, or queenless middle game, is um, really driven by the pawn structure, as I was explaining. White has the majority on the king side, black has the majority on the queen side. And despite what you've seen with like minority attacks, a lot of people know about the minority attack concept where you use less pawns to attack more pawns. The better indicator of what side of the board you should play on is often just where you have your majority, not minority. So here, white should play on the king side mostly and look to make inroads over there because I have a majority. My long-term goal is to create a pass pawn on that side of the board. It wouldn't make sense for me to launch a minority attack here because for minority attacks to work, um, you're usually you're usually playing against a specific target. Like you're trying to uh, create some very specific weakness, but his structure is free of defects. I would be wholly inappropriate in playing something like a3 and b4. If anything, that will just exp expose my own structure further. I did play a3 just to keep his knight out of b4, but I did not play it with any intention of playing b4. I should clarify. <laughs> he found a good maneuver. Oh, of course, after I said all that, the engine says I should have played b4 here. <laughs> Go figure. That's why I turn you off most of the time, engine. <laughs> okay, maybe in this position it's all right, because I guess my pawn coming up to b5 could help a lot. I don't know. That's interesting. Okay, I guess it does want to launch an attack against a7. I sounded so smart when I said that too. I was like, you know, I probably shouldn't do a minority attack. Engine's like, eh, actually, buddy, you should. <laughs> uh, computers. So I played the banal move, rook hd1. And then, uh, yeah, he brought his knight into c6. I will admit that I probably should have looked for something better right around here. So maybe, maybe b4 is the way to go. I mean, I mean, in chess, you kind of have to be like a scientist, right? Like if something comes along that disproves a point of view that you previously held, you have to be flexible in your... Uh, reasoning and logic skills and say like, you know what, even though I was very certain about this five minutes ago, I'm not so certain about it now and you're providing proof and maybe I should change my mind. So maybe b4 is a good move here. Okay, so, but he, yeah, now once I got g5 in, I was feeling good. Just this clear cut plan of occupying the file. It's a small edge to white. Didn't like rook g8, interestingly enough. Didn't like that. Why doesn't it like it? Bishop d2. Yeah, that was a maneuver that I escaped my attention. Putting the bishop on c3 and then going for f4. That's the best way to attack f6. Uh-huh. That also preempts knight c4. So like, if he does play knight c4, I think you and I would both agree that this is much better than having the bishop on c1. Bonus attacking that pawn. Yeah, this is practically winning for white. Aha. Uh -huh. So I was fixated on trying to like bring my king up to attack. Get somewhere in that region to attack the weak pawns, but actually repositioning my bishop in conjunction with f4 would have been a more constructive plan. And here it says I can go into the opposite color bishop endgame. And I don't know if I mentioned this in this video, but those who are experienced will know that opposite color bishop endgames are notoriously drawish. It's very difficult to win opposite color bishop endgames, especially when you're even on material. But it does say that this might warrant some attention. Bishop e2, I assume bishop d2, king c6 here, and then f5. Yeah, that f5 move is key, because if he doesn't play f5 in defense in this position, I get to take, and then I have two connected passers. By playing f5, he'll 
he'll reduce me to one passer because I can't take with the king because he takes here. So I'd probably take with the pawn and uh, I, I am up two pawns, but um, or no, sorry, I'm only up one pawn, but uh, it's just one pass pawn that I can possibly create. Just the f pawn. So bishop d2, yeah, that would have been a good plan. I think after bishop c1, he should have enough resources to hold, even though white remains a tiny bit better. King g4, yep, so a king move. Engine suggests king d7. Anything wrong with this either? Eh, probably not. I guess just staying out of the bishop f4 check range would be good. So king d7, and he should be okay. Yep, so I benefited from the major slip, bishop g6, game over. All right, another interesting endgame in this one. Hope you guys picked up a thing or two. And of course, let me know if you see any incorrect analysis or conclusions by me. All right, thanks for stopping in, guys. See you guys later.